So I've basically painted you into a corner. Yeah, you've got no implied flexibility. You've got no express flexibility. You can't reach a collective agreement. And I've persuaded you that just imposing the change without the employee's agreement is not a good idea. So what do you do? Well, you could give up and you could not make the change. And that might be the best thing to do. But if you believe that the change has to be made, then your last resort in terms of getting it made is to dismiss the employee and offer the new terms. Say, well, I'm sorry you won't agree to a change in this contract. That means we're going to change, that we're going to end that contract and we're going to offer you a new one. And that's not imposing a change. Technically, no contracts are changing in that process. What's happening is one contract is being brought to an end and you have the right under the contract to bring it to an end by giving notice. And another contract is being created and it's up to the employee to accept or reject your offer of that new contract. It's very important if that's the route you're going down that you're clear that what you're doing is terminating the contract. I've seen this done or attempted where the employer has actually given notice of the change. So they'll give 12 weeks notice that they intend to change the contract. And technically that's not correct. The employee is perfectly able if that happens to just turn around and say, I don't think so. I don't think you're changing my contract at all. And sit back and just continue to enjoy the benefits of the contract until the employer terminates it properly. So there needs to be a proper termination, notice of termination of the contract and an offer of a new contract to replace it. The consequence of that, the risk you're taking is that you are dismissing the employee and you're dismissing the employee even if they accept the new contract. As we saw with Hogan Dover College, the fact that the employment relationship continues, the fact that the employee continues to be an employee without a gap, does not alter the fact that the employer has terminated the contract of employment and that's a dismissal. And if they've got two years service, the employee can claim that the dismissal is unfair, possibly get compensation for the financial difference between the two um, jobs and also a basic award that will be the equivalent of a, of a redundancy payment. Where this happens, it's generally accepted that the dismissal will be within the category of some other substantial reason. Quick plug, I'm going to do a whole webinar on some of the substantial reason dismissals um, towards the end of the month, 25th of, of November. So watch out for that. Um, the dismissal will be a some other substantial reason dismissal. And the issue will be whether the employers behave reasonably. Is that a fair thing for the employer to do? Now, it's sometimes presented that this is necessarily an unfair thing for an employer to do, to dismiss people from one set of terms and give them less favorable terms. Um, it's, it's projected as being an aggressive act from the employer. And in some circumstances, it, it might well be. In some circumstances, however, the employer might feel this is the only way to keep the business going, or it's at least necessary to make the business successful. And therefore, it's a defensive act rather than an aggressive one. But, you know, that's the debate, isn't it? That's the to and fro between the rights of employers and the rights of employees. There's currently a debate um, politically because Labour has indicated that when it comes to power, 2024 onwards, perhaps, it will make it illegal for employers to do that. I don't entirely know how that's going to work. And I wrote a blog post, if you look at my blog, the range of reasonable responses about how I don't really see how the law could be changed in that way, because all we're really looking at is the dismissal and the question of whether the dismissal is fair or not. And this is an established practice. It may be that it's got political attention recently, but if we look at the leading case on how this works, and John of God Care Services Limited against Brooks, it's from 1992. This is a well-established process for employers to go through. And in this case, we had an employer who was in um, financial difficulties. And in order to keep going, felt they had to significantly downgrade their terms and conditions. And they did that quite seriously. They um, cut the level of pay. They reduced holiday entitlement. This was again before you had a minimum holiday entitlement. Um, they cut sick pay benefits. And they did that with consultation. They made it clear to the workforce that they thought that this was something that had to happen. And 140 of the 170 employees agreed with that. Only four actually claimed unfair dismissal. It may have been that a lot of them didn't have the qualifying service. You needed a two year qualifying period in order to bring that claim. 
And the tribunal found that it was an unfair dismissal because it thought that the terms that were being offered to the employees were unreasonable. They were quite, you know, serious um, erosions of the employees' um, contractual benefits. But the Employment Appeal Tribunal said, well, that's not the test in unfair dismissal. We don't look at whether the terms that are being offered are reasonable or not, or at least that's only one factor to look at. There are other factors that are relevant. How strong was the employer's need to do this? Um, how many other people have agreed to it? What's the process that the employer has gone through in order to get it through? And you've got to conduct a balancing exercise to figure out whether um, this is a reasonable thing for the employer to do. It's not something that you can decide purely by looking at how reasonable the terms and conditions that are being offered are. And the fact that the employee would be significantly worse off as a result of the change isn't on its own enough to make it an unfair dismissal. It might still be a reasonable thing for the employer to do if in doing that balancing act, it turns out to be within the range of reasonable responses.